Hello, welcome to One on One. I'm your host, Greg Walker. Got a good guest with us today. We're taping this show March the 16th on a Wednesday morning, and we have first year head baseball coach Travis Jansen joining us. Austin P. State University's new baseball coach, his 20th season coaching baseball. We're going to get to know Coach Jansen much better today, get his thoughts, opinions, and comments on a wide array of subject matter. Obviously, we're going to focus on baseball. I want you to settle back, relax, and enjoy a fun, down-to-earth conversation with a nice gentleman. New Austin P. head baseball coach Travis Jansen joins us right after these words. Thank you. It's the big savings event at Matthews Nissan in Clarksville or MatthewsNissan.com. New Altima or New Frontier, $17,999. Unbelievable. New Rogue, $18,999. New Sentra, $14,999. New Versa, $9,999. Save big on 400 new. You're going to love our prices. I'm Gary Matthews, and that's my guarantee. You're going to love our prices. The Leaf Chronicle is now available on every device you carry or don't carry. All things Clarksville in all media 24-7. Subscribe now for full access. For a hundred years, Neil Tarpley Parchment Funeral Home has honored legacies. We believe every family deserves a special time of celebrating a life well lived. Neil Tarpley Parchment, people who care, a name you can trust. Welcome to our show today. New Austin P. State University head baseball coach Travis Jansen. Pleasure, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. It's been fun getting to know you a little bit this morning. Great. G glad to be here. Yeah, good to have you here. Season's going pretty well starting out, and you got, as we take this show, as I said, March 16th, got three big wins over EIU over the weekend. Well, the preseason, you know, the schedule was a challenging one, and so, you know, th those games we used to, to kind of, you know, keep learning about our team and, and learning how guys would respond in different situations, you know, within a game. And, and, and that's led up to the first conference weekend. And our first conference weekend went really well. And uh, anytime you can, you can sweep somebody, whether it's at home or on the road, that's a really, really solid weekend, obviously. So we got off to a good start conference-wise, and, and, and the season has gotten off to a good start. Now tonight, they play Northern Illinois. Of course, when this show first airs, that game will be history, but it is at uh, Raymond Seahan Park at 6. And then this weekend, uh, the Govs travel to Jacksonville State. Of course, you know a little bit about JSU. Yes, sir. Uh, Jacksonville State was a place that um, I served two different stints. The second stint was very, very quick, but um, you know, I spent six good years there, and and have a lot of respect for the program and the university and, and how Coach Case does things. And, and so there, there's a, a big part of my coaching history did take place at Jacksonville State. And it'll be interesting to go back there. So looking forward to that. You know what I like about JSU? What's that? Is it Cooter Brown's Barbecue? <laughs> huh? That's right. It's still there. <laughs> oh, man, I love it. Yeah, Cooter Brown's is, <laughs> is about a quarter mile from the baseball stadium. So if you ever get there, you need to check it out. You really do. It's no doubt about that. Let's let the folks and let's get to know you a little bit. Where were you born and raised? I was born in Manhattan, Kansas. Um, my uh, Born in Kansas, and, and that's where I went to high school. So my first 18 years were, were there. And... Um, uh, my, my father was a, a sports journalist, and so he covered Kansas State, so I got to experience a lot of neat things in college athletics. I bet you did. Um, got to see a lot of NCAA tournaments and baseball games and football games and how that football program went from not very much to what it is today. So got to see a lot of things, and, and I had a really neat childhood in that capacity, and that's probably where I got hooked on sports. So. I uh, grew up in Manhattan, Kansas, and then, and then uh, senior year of high school, we won a state championship. Man. Pretty neat deal. And then what position did you play? I was a shortstop. I was a shortstop. And you were an athlete. 
so it was a shortstop and then a, and then I guess a shooting guard in basketball. But then from there I went to Butler County and played two years of junior college baseball in El Dorado, Kansas. Had a great experience there. And then and then from there got out of the state of Kansas and that's kind of when my coach or you know my journey in baseball going all over. That's when it started. So went and played two years at New Mexico State down there in Las Cruces, New Mexico. And so how just, was that? Uh, New Mexico State was a uh, it, it was a very good experience. Coach Avent was a really good coach, and and um, and you know I was a I was a second baseman and a first baseman there. Had a lot of good teammates. Played in a really really good league. At that time, the Big West Conference was Cal State Fullerton, Long Beach State, uh, good baseball, Nevada Reno. I mean, it, it was a very very good conference. So literally got to play against some of the best. In the country, so yeah. so that was a neat experience. Yeah, so. had to be. Now I was going to ask you about your parents. Your dad, a sports journalist, uh, does he still do that, or is he retired? He was a sports editor for the Manhattan Mercury. So the Manhattan Mercury was a newspaper. Uh, it was the only newspaper in town, and um, he was the guy that covered Kansas State for roughly 40 years. And and he's published a couple of books, and um, really proud of the career he's had. He, he's just a really, really neat career. So. I'd like to get to know him, yeah. Well, he'll be here for, he'll be here in, in middle of next month. So really? he, you would have that opportunity. So, um, so yeah, so it, very, very neat career that he had. And, and um, like I said, I got to see a lot of neat things. Now, how about your mother? My mom, um, she, she was the hard worker of the family. They both were, but she, she sells uh, Mary Kay Cosmetics. And so she have a pink Cadillac? You dang right. She you, uh, <laughs> she she uh, she had a number of pink Cadillacs. So um, she she did good for herself, and there was there was always uh, ladies knocking on the door needing makeup. So <laughs> I I probably know more about uh, makeup and that kind of stuff more than most people. So. Well, you know, I'm going to tell you something that I shouldn't tell on myself, but I have a thing of Mary Kay makeup that I spot up a little here and there. Can you tell I got makeup on today? No. I, I I can't, but I, if you run out, I know where you can go. <laughs> I so. appreciate it. Now, siblings, you have one sister? I have a sister that's, um, how old is she now? She, she's, I'll just say she's in her upper 30s. That way, <laughs> don't have to divulge her age. But she lives in Phoenix, Arizona. She's married to a wonderful guy. Uh, they live out in Phoenix. They have three small children, and I don't, we don't get to see them nearly as much, just, you know, just because of where we live. But we do see each other over the holidays and it's always great to see them. So it sounds like to me though, growing up, you had a good childhood background and a great experience as, as a youth. That, that's putting it mildly. I, I was so blessed the way I was raised and two very, very solid parents and uh, we, we, we grew up very, very uh, fortunate and just very thankful for how we were, did grow up. Now your background as a coach is really interesting and I'm not going to have him have to talk about all of them, but just like Kansas State, Butler County Community College, we're talking about as assistants, Arkansas, Northwestern State assistant, Hawaii, Jacksonville State, he told you a little about that. Now, Northeastern State in Oklahoma, head coach, your first head coaching experience, and you went to Northeastern State. I think y'all had a y'all. You raised that one loss record about 19 wins in your first year, didn't you? Yes, sir. That's exactly right. So all of those stops, you know, I I caught my first break, so to speak, um, when I was 24, 25, and and Coach DeBrine at the University of Arkansas, he gave me a shot to experience the SEC and to um, you know just to go through that and be a part of a program like the University of Arkansas. Mm -hmm. It was, it, was, it was so valuable in so many ways. Well, one of the things he said was, Travis, spend your time here at Arkansas and then, and then go out and learn from different people. You're, you're passionate about baseball. You're young. You're single. Go, go learn from different people. And so I took his advice and, and, and tried to make good moves and, and tried to you know, make moves that made sense and, and uh, got a chance to work with some really, really great mentors. And, and um, so that, that's why I bounced around a little bit. And then, and then it all led to, to my mid-30s, and I got the, I had the itch for a while, but I wanted to be a head coach, so I went to Northeastern State in Oklahoma. So thankful for the opportunity that they gave me. And, um, you know, it, it was a situation where the program did have a lot of opportunity for turnaround. We were able to do that. We, we made a program that wasn't competitive at all with a lot of hard work from players, assistant coaches. We did. We made it a very, very competitive program, and I think that experience um, – really, really helped prepare me 
to come here. And so they're, they're all, they all were valuable for different reasons. That head coaching experience uh, was probably the most valuable. You know, this tells me one thing, all of these stops, though. You have a coach's wife because only a coach's wife would do this. Am the, I correct? Just, you're very correct. She, uh, she, she's been along for the ride, I guess, ever since Arkansas, and yeah, that's where we met. And so, so Hawaii to, to Jacksonville State and then up to Oklahoma, and, and then here we go, you know, so different places. And, and, and she, she enjoys the lifestyle. She's in, she enjoys it. She moved around when she was young, so it's not, it's not like she's ever been just rooted one place as a young child. And, and um, so she, she's, she's been great. She, she helps keep the family together and uh, beh behind every good coach, you know, there's, there's a good coach's wife and I, and I have one of them. So very thankful. Three wonderful children, correct? That's right. We have, uh, we have our oldest is a daughter. Her name's Avery. Uh, we joke that she's the most mature one of the whole family. She, <laughs> she helps keep it together as much as anybody, but she's 11 years old and, and she is, uh, she's a dancer and she dances three times a week and, and you know we're biased, but we think she's we, we think she's really good. And and then Tate is a uh, he's a nine year old now. It's hard to say. He just turned nine. Um, uh, baseball guy. He he likes movies. He's you know just typical little boy. He's into everything. Always smiling. That's how I would describe him. That's great. And then our four year old Turner. Um, he has a little different fire than the other two. So he he's uh, he he has a little bit different energy. And, and if he's going someplace, he's always running. He's got an honorary streak. He likes to mess with the other two, and, and so there's part of me that enjoys that part about him. So they're all they're all a little bit different, and um, boy, they're a lot of fun. They're all very smart, and they're great kids. Now it's difficult to move your entire family, get here, settle in, get everybody going different places, schools. Is that coming around slowly? No, it's not coming around slowly. They've adjusted. <laughs> they've right. adjusted so easily. That's and, right. Um, you know, and I'm not sure why that is, but they, they've just, they've rolled with the punches. And we left Oklahoma, and, and then I alluded earlier to a, a stop at Jacksonville State. We went to Jacksonville State for about a month and a half. And I mean, in that month and a half, they started school. So we, we, we took them from Oklahoma, we put them in Alabama. They were there for a few weeks, started school. Uh-oh, time to make another move. And, and they've handled everything great, and they've made a lot of good friends. What attracted you most about the Austin P. job? Well, I, I, it's just a no-brainer of a situation as far as the tradition, as far as um, the players that have come before, as far as there, there's a chance um, to win right now. Um, you know, Ryan Ivey, the athletic director, I was really drawn to him and, and his leadership style and how he communicated. Um, I wanted to be a head coach at the Division One level. Uh, when I went back to Jacksonville State the second time, um, with encouragement from Coach Case, you know, he said, Travis, you really are prepared for that job and you need to go after it. So there were a lot of factors that added up to it and, and it just made a lot of sense. Our guest today is Travis Jansen, the head coach at Austin P. State University. More with the coach after this. Leaf Chronicle is now available on every device you carry or don't carry. All things Clarksville in all media 24 7. Subscribe now for full access. Welcome back. Our guest today is head baseball coach, Austin P. State University, Travis Jansen. Interesting gentleman. I think he's going to do a wonderful job here at Austin P. I say that from the heart. You know that, or I wouldn't say it. Let's talk about baseball a little bit, Coach. And of course, you're here, and you're the head coach, and you're in the midst of the season. We talked about JSU this weekend. Then the next weekend, Murray State comes to town. Good opportunity. Then that will be uh, 
the uh, 24th, 25th, 26th to get over and see the govs at Raymond C. Han if you haven't checked them out already. I know a lot of it has to do a lot of times as far as philosophy is concerned with the personnel you have on hand. But you, from just a baseball standpoint, what is your philosophy? Well, we'll start with pitching and defense. From a, from a pitching and defense standpoint, we like guys on the mound that compete. And, and so what does that mean as a pitcher? We like guys that, that throw a lot of strikes in the bottom of the strike zone. We like pitchers that will um, you know, keep our defense on the toes. And, and just we want to have an attitude on the mound to where we're really trying to force the action and, and try, to, try to make the hitters put it in play. And then from a defensive standpoint, we want to make routine plays. That's one of been one of the biggest Amen. emphasis since we've been here in, in September is, is to try to continue to improve the defense. You know, the, the MO on Austin P the last couple of years uh, from different people have said, boy, you, you swing the bats, but, but there's times that the defense breaks down. And so we've done a better job of that. You know, I've been very happy with the defense. And then from, a, from an offensive standpoint, what I like personally is, of course, there needs to be three or four guys in the middle that can that can drive people in, but yeah, nothing like a three-run homer. Yeah, that's right. But but I also sometimes Small ball. sometimes those three-run homers are, are inconsistent, and, yeah. and so I like guys that put the ball in play. I like guys that can run. I like I like the idea of of uh, being able to pressure defenses and making defenses uncomfortable, and and um, so so that that's you know that's how we go about the baseball part of it. You know, I say this from the heart as an Austin, well as a baseball junkie. How about this? We've also, uh, a weakness for the Govs over the years has been base running. Mm -hmm. uh, how's this team in that aspect? Knock on wood on that. You know, we, we haven't had any problems. Now, we don't, I wouldn't say we have a, it's not a great team speed type of team. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not, a, it's not a team that, you know, the opposing dugout's going to say, there's six guys out there that can really run. It's not that. But we have been smart for the most part. Uh, one thing I've tried to instill is, is, is I've given, uh, two or three guys to green light. They, they have the freedom on the basis to steal a base uh, if they choose to because I think they're smart enough to do it. I think that's uh, freed them up a little bit as far as just, you know, having some freedom to, you know, and that's a trust thing between coach and player. And, and uh, it's burned us once in 12 games, but for the most part they've made good decision. And base running has been fine so far. Coach, one thing uh, when I was coaching, a physical – mistake. They're going to happen. I mean, you know, you want to have a great defense. Physical mistakes are going to happen. The things that would always, I cannot stand mental mistakes. How you feel about that? Well, baseball, it may be more than any other game. It's a game of concentration. Absolutely. Every pitch is a different situation. There's a lot of downtime in baseball. And, and, and people that don't understand the nuances and don't understand how baseball and the, the rhythm and the flow of the game can think it can be boring sometimes because it's not constant, constant, constant. So, so it is a game of concentration, and, and, and we talk about that. It's a game of strategy more than any other. It's strategy. It, it is. It, it, you know, and, and one pitch can alter. Uh, well, are we going to sack bunt here, or are we going to go ahead? Now it's the count's 2-0, and is this the time to hit? You know, there's, there's always things that can, can change from pitch to pitch. And, um, but the concentration part, that is big, and, and, and we talk about that just – being ready to play every day and being accountable to your teammates to, to be plugged in and be ready to go every day. And what I mean by mental, too, hitting the proper cutoff man, the little things that sometimes go unnoticed, you know, uh, doing the small things. Uh, and to be quite frank, there's not a lot of time. You know, nine men moving on every given play. There's somewhere to be. There's somewhere to back up. You don't see that. I watch it close, Coach. I, I don't see as much of that as I'd like to see any longer. That, that, that may be true. And, um, I'm not saying over here. I'm just saying in general. Right. And, you know, you know, not to get off on a tangent here, but the way youth baseball has changed, that might be part of it because teams really don't play anymore together. Now, now you know, the high school season gets over. And then everybody scatters off to different travel ball teams. And so that continuity gets lost. And so now. That's a good point. So now instead of the left fielder backing up third base on a steal attempt when the guy's stealing third base, well, the guy's in left field and he's, he's playing at some tournament with coaches he hardly knows and there's no time for practice. 
So some of those small things can get overlooked, you know, yeah. through the middle school and high school years. And they've got to happen on really good clubs. What type of athletes catch your eye first? Um, well, okay. You asked the question. Uh, I, the, what I would say, the first thing that came to my mind is fast twitch. What does fast twitch mean? Just guys with quickness. Guys with quickness and, and um, like I said earlier, I like guys that can run. Um, strength is a factor, but I also like to look at bodies that can they get more flexible and can they get stronger. You don't have to be an ox coming out of high school. I like to look for bodies that have a chance to, to, to grow and get stronger. And I think the weight room can be a great thing. I think the weight room can also hurt you as a I baseball agree. player. And, uh, <laughs> I agree. That's a fine line because the way the players interpret it, like if we don't lift weights, then we're not getting as good as we could be. Well, then you lift weights the wrong way and then you got a problem. It, 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 who wants a guy that's tight, muscle, not fluid, swing, you know? It's not a, it's not a bound up game. It's, it's not. not. It's not. It's a game where, uh, you know, smoothness and, and flexibility. flexibility. Yeah. That's right. so. uh, which coaches have you or do you admire most? Oh, boy. Um, well, you know, just some of my mentors, I think that'd be the first place to start. Um, and then there, there's, there's almost too many to mention individually. Well, let's but, go this way then. Let's go a step further. Where did you learn the most about the game? Well, my da moves. as a young kid, my dad, he, he knew a ton about the game. And, and so, so that, that was a start. I think I was a little bit ahead when I got into high school. My junior college coach, B.D. Parker, um, he, he was the first coach that really, really um, – the small things you're talking Got about. Got inside the ears. You th things that you don't really think about. Uh, I had a high school coach named Don Hess, and, and he was a, a great guy that prepared me. And then for maybe like managing a team and, and maybe just ma managing different strategies and maybe the stuff off of the field, uh, Mitch Gaspard, who's the head coach at Alabama, I worked for him for three years, great three years, and, and Jim Case at Jacksonville State. Those are some, some different people that I really admire for different reasons. Great stuff. Head coach, Travis Jansen, Austin Peay State University. We'll be back, stretch run. We're going to have some fun with him on the questions in the stretch run right after this. Thank you. It's the big savings event at Matthews Nissan in Clarksville or MatthewsNissan.com. New Altima or New Frontier, $17,999. Unbelievable. New Rogue, $18,999. New Sentra, $14,999. New Versa, $9,999. Save big on 400 new. You're going to love our prices. I'm Gary Matthews, and that's my guarantee. You're going to love our prices. For a hundred years, Neil Tarpley Parchment Funeral Home has celebrated legacies with services as unique as each life. Neil Tarpley Parchment, people who care, a name you can trust. Welcome back, Stretch Run. Our guest today is Travis Jansen. He's the head baseball coach at Austin P. Off to a good season, 3-0 in the OVC. As we tape this show, March the 16th. Coach, you're just as good as the people around you, and I know you're well aware of that. How are your assistant coaches? Well, I, I, boy, I couldn't be luckier on that regard. You know, just the situation of, of coming in in the middle of September. Uh, we'll start with Coach Dunbar. Um, well, we'll start with this. When I talk about my assistant coaches, I, I think they have a lot of passion, and I think that uh, they, they work so hard, and, and, and that part's been a lot of fun. You know, Coach Dunbar with the hitters and the offense, and then he, he mans up the recruiting. He works hard on all aspects of it and um, really, really does a good job. And then Coach Byron, uh, he's come down. Our pitchers have so much respect for him and, and the passion he puts in. He, 
What I like about him is he takes each individual guy and tries to, whatever they have strengths in, he tries to make those better, you know, and he coaches them all different, which I really appreciate. So those two guys do a great job. And then we have a young guy named A.J. Gora, just finished playing, and, and he, uh, he kind of fills in the blank, so to speak. And, and all three of them are good personalities, and it's been fun working with those guys. That's great. Coach, I asked everybody that's ever been on this show this, what's the best advice you've ever received? Oh, boy, best advice. Um, probably work hard and control the things you can control. You know, what, you know, you know just, just, do, just do the best you can. And then, you know, the next thing would be just try to, try to keep your eyes on the things that you really have control over. And then the other things, you, you better not pay those too much attention because you, you can't control them anyway. So just put your focus on things that you have control over. Well said. You have any hobbies? You know, being a dad is the biggest one right now. You know, a I, good one. I, I like to play golf, and I probably played golf four times in the last eight years. You know, so <laughs> I don't have time to do that right now with where we're at in life. And uh, I, I, I exercise, I run a little bit, and, and you know, I, I love music. I love different types of music. What and, type of music do you like? Oh gosh, oh everything. You know, I you know country. You know the kind of the new stuff. Eric Church, I like him. Uh, Going back 20 years, I, I like Pearl Jam a lot and just different types of music. That's so, great. Hey, yeah. man, because music, I'm a music lover yeah, also. That's right. How far back do you go, though? Well, I... I'm, I bet your dad liked music. You know, he, he was an Alabama guy. He was an Oak Ridge Boys guy. That's what I remember listening oh, to yeah. growing up. So. I got you. Yeah. Uh, is baseball your favorite sport? It really is. And basketball would probably be a close second. You know, I, uh, I, I really enjoy basketball. And, but, but baseball, there's, there's nothing even close to baseball. But, then, but I, do enjoy, um, I do enjoy basketball. How so. much TV or movies do you get to watch? Oh, it, it usually revolves around the kids. You know, so, <laughs> you know, and then at 9 o'clock at night when they're in bed, and then uh, usually the wife takes over and, and she, she's watching TV there. So, but... On the road and things like that, I, I do usually. If, if I'm running the remote control, usually college basketball or or uh, or some sort of baseball is on. What's your favorite food? Probably pizza. That's pizza or steak. Those. That's the first thing that popped in my head. So, well, that's good. What about drink? Oh boy, um, probably Sprite or sweet iced tea. And, uh, you're a coffee man, straight I, black. I like that. Well, don't the, have to put anything in it, man. In the mornings, I, I'm that way. So, yes, sir. What is what is your favorite place out of all the places you visited and worked? What's your favorite place? Boy, um, I've I've been literally baseball has taken me from Hawaii to Maine to Seattle to Miami. <laughs> I mean, you know, the last 22 years, you know, to think. Somebody from Kansas would go to all these uh, all these different places. Um, you know, I, the favorite place I, I'm not even really sure, but you know, I try to find the positives in every place. And you start off with Clarksville, Tennessee. The people have been so welcoming and so nice, and that's just not, that's not a line. That's truthful. People have treated our family so good, and you know, when you're in a position like I am, that you have to work so hard at your job. When your family gets treated good, it's so valuable. So Clarksville has been awesome. I want you to know it's been a pleasure, man. Thank you so much. I wish you nothing but success. Look forward to doing this again. Head so. Coach Travis Jansen, he will be back. Thanks for tuning in. I want to thank Steve Sawyer for making it all work. For our guests, for yours truly, until next time, have a very nice rest of the day, folks. <laughs>